hello hello welcome back to divine destiny guide i'm back with another message for you i hope you're doing well wherever you are of course sending you the purest of love and light as always god is for us and because he is who can be against us know that you're blessed you're highly favored you're safe and you're secured so if it's your first time welcome returning soul travelers new soul travelers thank you so very much for your continuous love and support thank you for liking these videos uh the notification is not going out um for a lot of you who have the notification bells on so the only thing that i'm asking is if you can please for those of you my soul drivers if you can please hit the like button hopefully that will help to push the messages so that others can receive them and they can be blessed as well because the notification is not going out for persons to know whenever I upload a message so hey as usual we know what's going on but hey the hotter the battle the sweeter the victory and so because of that we'll keep pressing on right so here it says self-doubt you're questioning yourself and unable to move forward. Don't let fear hold you back. You have the strength and power to see it through. Now is the time to break free from this limiting pattern. So if you're having self-doubt, again, people can try, even if people try to sabotage you. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. Because they can try, it's like they can lead you to the water. But then if you don't drink, you can't self-sabotage. Because self-sabotage is you doing it for yourself. And they'll say, well, I didn't tell you to, you, you did it. So therefore, whatever it is that you're doubting yourself about, you're getting the go-ahead here. So don't allow your fear. Remember, fear is false evidence appearing as real it's not real it's not real this i mean this message here is saying you have the strength so you are stronger than you think you're more powerful than you know basically you have everything within you so even if this is something that you have to go alone because here we have the moon is out, we have the light, so it's like it's the night. You know, it reminds me of Little Red Riding Hood. It's like you're going out on, on your journey. There is something that you need to do or you're called to do. And you're allowing what ifs, what ifs to get in the way. Fear, things that have not even happened yet. You're, you're allowing the enemy to win the battle because even if the enemy is there there's an angel who is also there nudging you to go but see the loudest room the loudest room the loudest noise is not from god the devil makes the most noise so fear may be resonating more god gives us gently nudges and then sometimes we have dreams or we, we tell God certain things and then when we are listening, we, we don't listen. We don't look for the signs and the synchronicities of how God is, is prompting us, nudging us as well to move and to do. So it's time to break free from those limiting patterns. You have to be able to take, you know, take the risk, you know, life. It's, it's, we'll say it's risk, but in the spiritual realm, it's risk is like faith move. Faith moves. It's, it's going off the, the edge, not knowing what's beneath, but trusting that divine, that God is there to catch us and he will. So it's like if you were allowing shame or guilt to hold you back, it's like this is not the time. Whatever burden or burdens that you've been carrying for so long, it's time to release those guilt that you place on yourself and start a new chapter in your life. Set new goals. 
and take the action towards your happiness. See, that's the thing. It's like, don't allow shame or guilt or what people are going to say. I'm telling you, it's like one of the best, one of the best and biggest blessings for me was to break free. Break free from what people are going to say, what people are going to think. Because when, when that is broken off of you, it's like you don't care. You don't care. It's, it's another level of being fearless, another level of being bold. Because again, even the enemy will try to bring up your failures, your past, the, the thing, why you shouldn't do, why you shouldn't say in order to stop you. And then you have people around you or in your life who will try to remind you of your flaws, your weaknesses. And again, those are in the past. You're no longer a slave to fear or shame anymore. Once you are in Christ, once you're born again, once you've gone through this transformation, this rebirth, there is nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be ashamed of. So it's time to break free of whatever it is that guilt or shame that you've been carrying on your shoulders. That is not who you are. With God, you have a new name, new beginnings, a fresh start. When you change your life, God makes all things new for you. He makes everything new. So there's no need to have this guilt, no need to have this shame. When you think about it, it's like you have Judas and you have Peter. Both men messed up big time because all sin, every sin is the same sin, right? But at the same time, it's like Judas, because he was so ashamed, he allowed that to take him to a place where he was unable to take himself out. While Peter, on the other hand, he sought forgiveness. He sought forgiveness. So it is so important to let it go. Whatever it is, let it go. Knowing that you are protected. Whatever your plans are. Again, if God shows you, if God gives you that dream, that vision, he's going to protect you. He's going to protect it. It doesn't matter what wage is, what war is waged. What the enemy, but again, it's like God needs you. You can't. It's like you need to co-create with God in order to carry this through. God cannot do this without you. You must be on board full time in order to carry this thing out as well. So for a lot of you, this means you showing up authentically. Be your divine self at all times. You weren't designed to fit in. Break away from expectations and fully express yourself in your own unique way. And you'll be a magnet for success. So like the peacock here, the peacock is proud. Not in an arrogant way, but it's like he has all these beautiful feathers, you know, and it's just the way he was naturally made. And I think... I, I mean, everything else around us in nature, they have this freedom to express themselves. Unfortunately, it's not the same with human beings. Because when you, especially those of you who work hard, those of you who put the work in and you have achieved certain things in life, when you wear it or you drive it or you live in it people are envious they don't want to see your true colors come out they are doing any and everything to try to dim your light 
when you have the fruits, when it's time to bear, the fruits are going to put out their biggest and their best. The peacock is going to show its radiant colors. Everything at night, the heavens, the stars. You know, it's like the Bible says, the heaven declares the glory of God and the firmament show it its handiwork. And yet still for us, people want us to be ashamed, to doubt ourselves. Again, do good, just don't do better than me. I mean, it is so sad. It, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is really bad with us as human beings, the way how we get so insecure. And when people are insecure, instead of them just, if that's the way they want to be, if they're not willing to change, then just stay insecure and, and, and mind your business, drink your water and stay out the way. But no, they're coming after you. They're coming after us. The peacocks who decide that, no, I understand that I'm an eagle and I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to pick up crumbs like you off the ground because this is what you decide. That's not my portion. I now know that I can fly. And I know that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So, therefore, I'm going to live my best, my blessed life. I am going to live full and die empty. But a lot of people, they want to hold back. And then they want you to hold back. They want you to be contented in, in playing it safe just like them. And you're called here to live your life out loud on full display. Tap into everything you have within you. Leave the doubting outside. And then sometimes when, when even for those who are going and doing, it's not that you don't have certain, you know, little tinge of fear but again it's pushing past that it's it's not allowing that to stop you it's not allowing that to block you so it's not that oh you are you have something so much out of the way that other people can't tap into this is something that is there for everybody but again not everybody wants to do it but then when you decide to do it then they start frowning and and growling and hissing and all of this foolishness but Keep on. Compassion. You are being asked to be kinder to yourself. To give yourself a break. Instead of being a taskmaster, a bully, and a horrible friend, be a loving comforter who always has your back. So again, for a lot of you, you could have people, again, with you, with the self-doubt, see the shame card. It's like have compassion on yourself. You could have had people who are a horrible friend to you, who were bullying you. They did not have your back. And it's like, now it's time for you to show up as this person for yourself, to be compassionate towards yourself. Because for a lot of us, sometimes even when you decide to let go off of toxic people, you still remember the way how they talk to you. You still remember the, the negative and nasty things that they have said to you. And it's like now you have to learn to speak kinder to yourself. Be gentler to yourself. Some of you have been going, going. It's like you've been taking care of people so much that now is like, when you cut off or God remove those toxic people from out of your life, it's like, what do I do with my time now? You're called to have compassion on yourself. The way we talk to ourselves, again, even with self-doubt, it is one thing when people don't believe in us, but it's important for you to believe in yourself. People don't have to believe in you. 
You don't want to be learn from Joseph's mistake. Don't run around asking people about their opinions when it comes to your dreams or sharing your ideas. Because not everybody's going to want to see you do that. People are going to want to bully you, to talk you out of what you're supposed to do. So you're called to have compassion. And I'm telling you, it's like when you do that, you will see it through. You will see it come to pass. Whatever it is, it's like it's not as bad as you think. Everything, especially when it's the first time you're doing it, it, you know, it will rattle your nerves and there's a little bit of anxiety. But again, we're called to be anxious for nothing. But in everything, prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. So see it through. You don't, you don't. So for some of you, you don't always finish what you start and then talk badly to yourself because of it. Break the karmic pattern by seeing a project through to the end. And then be proud of what you have accomplished. I'm telling you. So we have self-doubt. And we're finishing this deck with the seed through. You need to know that whatever you start. God will help you to see it through to the end. And so for a lot of you. A lot of us. There are things that you could be working on. That the enemy is trying to break you. So you don't finish. You don't finish the race. You don't finish the course. And he who has started a good work in you, he will see it through to the end. So you're going to have things coming up, people trying again to sabotage you. But as long as you don't participate, it won't be called self-sabotage. So the enemies can try. They're going to throw out boulders and rocks and different hiccups whatever i mean it's the devil's plan to strategize you understand that's what they do it's our job to stay focused this is what you need to understand it's not to be not to get caught up by the distractions not to allow the currents of the enemies fear to pull us down that is their job that's what they do they want to keep us off of the course they want us to change the course they want us to give up they want us to quit see through for a lot of you a lot of us it's a karmic pattern it's a lesson that we, we you need to break we need to break the cycle because people wants you they want us to get frustrated and give up whatever you're pursuing close it up lock it down start over and it's like yes it's getting hot a lot of these people they i mean again they're doubling down but you're called to see it through and then it's like the thing is remember you're not doing this by yourself they're not working by themselves but again there is more with us than with them it doesn't matter how many minions or trolls they have behind them none of them are greater than who we have because we have more with us than they have. That is what we need to know. And I mean, I know these people, they, 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 they definitely were not good with maths. And I'm not talking about algorithms, statistics, and algebra. It's simple maths. It's like, come on, it's like what? 50 are you? You, you know how many you have on the payroll? And then it's only one or two of us. I mean, that's not fear. You guys not playing fear. And then again, you should realize some, they should realize something is wrong with that. It's fuzzy maths. It doesn't make sense. The math is not mathing. And then for the fact that you're still going, I mean, come on. But again, remember they, they, they have an assignment to carry out. And so do we. So do we. The race is not for the swift. The battle is not for the strong. But it is to those who endure to the end. It's not even a matter of first place, second place. 
It is endurance, it's perseverance, it is determination, it is willpower, it is strength, it is courage in the face of fear. It is seeing the lion growling. It is seeing or hearing the snake hissing and, and, and you know, it's like the, the rattlesnake, the tail shaking. And still push through unfaze that's what it's all about so don't forget the enemies are doing what they're supposed to do they want to distract you they want to see everything up except good happen to you or for you but again it's your goal to keep focus that was the lesson with peter keep your eyes on jesus when you keep your eyes on the one who is for us, with us. You will never drown. You will never sink. Again, it doesn't mean that the weapons won't form. But what you need to take comfort in is that it won't prosper. It doesn't mean that the waves won't come crashing in big and loud and all of this stuff. But we will fear no evil. And we're not going to be afraid of the pestilence that walk it by night. We're not going to be afraid by the terror by night either. We're not going to be afraid by the, with, of the arrows that come to us at noonday. We're not going to be afraid because God is with us. It won't prosper. So get out of this self-doubt. Be yourself. Stand in your truth. Be who you are called to be, who you are created to be. Be compassionate on yourself. Yes, people may have bullied you, talked to you badly, rough. From a child growing up, a lot of you are black sheep. So yes, you. I mean, everything that the enemy could throw at you, a lot of you, it started from you were a child. It didn't just begin when you are 20-something. This is something that you've been experiencing since you came on this earth. At least in, in, in the 3D form, right? So it's nothing new. But then again, it takes healing. It takes loving yourself. And this is why so many of us, we give out of our brokenness. Because we want to be accepted by people. Because we feel as if the only way people are not going to see our flaws, the only way they're going to accept us is if we keep giving, 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 people pleasing. And then you'll realize the moment you decide, you know what? I am going to heal. I'm going to stand up for myself. And I'm going to break free from the opinion of others and don't give a darn anymore. Then this is how you realize that you are buying love. Because those same people, they're going to turn on you. They're going to hate you. They're going to talk badly about you. They're going to call up everybody you know and tell them nasty things about you. And those people are going to believe them. And then when you realize you try to go to those same people to explain what happened, they already formed their opinion of you. You realize you're on your own. And by the time, if you are willing to do the inner work and heal yourself from all of those traumas and be compassionate to yourself, love yourself, speak life into yourself, the things you are looking to people for, you can now do it to yourself because now you know where your source and your help comes from. This is what happens when you go through that transformation. You learn to be self-sufficient. And by the time those people realize that they believe the lie and they try to come back to you, you don't need them anymore. You don't need them anymore. And even those who try to remind you, you remember when, oh, you were, it, it, it doesn't trigger you anymore. It won't trigger you either. Because who is that person? I don't, re I mean, I don't relate. It doesn't resonate with me. It's like you have jumped a thousand timelines between that time. 
you're not the same man or woman. And this is what happens. Again, some of you, some of us don't realize it, but it's almost as if it's a curse of starting things and stopping things. It's something in the bloodline, not seeing anything through. And because you're a generational curse breaker, you're called to see it through. And at one point, it may be, it may be about the clout or wanting certain things. And then you realize, you know what? It's not about that. I keep going because I remember why I started in the first place. And that is what should keep you going. The why. Not You're not thinking about them and what they are going to say. Because one thing that I know, when you do God's business, God takes care of you. He does. <clears throat> and he will. So some of you could have been, you know, with the self-doubt. You know, with the saving here. You know, being mean, preserved. It's like holding yourself back. This is what I'm getting from there. You're holding yourself back. And it's like divine wants you to be strategic. You know, it's like move on whatever idea with a daydream here. The natural disaster is in reverse. So it's like <clears throat> you may be allowing fear to hold you back. Thinking that something is going to happen. Well, it's in reverse. You're not going to have to be in that survival mode. It's like it's going to turn out better than you think. And it's one of those where sometimes when we think the worst and then you realize when you do it or you did it, then it's like, oh my goodness, you were amped up for no, no big reason. All of that fear and it's like you're so happy that you did not listen to that voice. So this is why you're called to keep going, keep pushing. Yes, I'm telling you. See, right again, right, ritual, ceremony, mastery, magic. You know, it's like you can believe, you can manifest what it is that you want. But again, like I said, for a lot of you, this is a karmic cycle that you're going to have to break. Of people in your family. Not not finishing what they start, not going the, the you know the long way, not completing what you're supposed to do, not following your heart's desire because you don't want to push the limits, you don't want to test the water. Again, you're you're afraid of the opinion of others. And I'm telling you, this is something that somebody needs to understand is asking for deliverance from the opinion of other people because it will hold you back. I mean, like I said, Peter made a big mistake. Three times he betrayed Jesus. And he asked for forgiveness. Judas, he was ashamed. He was guilty of what other people are going to say. And it's like for him, there was no way out. So it was best for him just to take himself out. So for a lot of you, like I said, it could have been people, you know, have been doing magic, doing things to hold you back, to keep you up in your head. When I see the self-doubt, it's like I'm seeing the eight of swords card, the nine of swords. It's like a lot of thoughts running through your head. The what if, the what if, the fears. This is what people are projecting. Some people could have been doing magic in order to try to block you, to put you in this headspace so you will hold back. Don't want to make a move. But I'm telling you here, the bullies in reverse. An end to bullying. An end to embarrassment, to gossip, unwillingness. You're not listening to those bullies anymore. Because see... And again, with the compassion card, it talk about bullies. Even for yourself, you're going to stop bullying yourself and believe in lies and, and negativity. But whatever the enemy was trying to do in manifesting, 
natural disasters like none of that and we see the strategy here too you know so people could have been planning and plotting and you're thinking this is you but it's people who are projecting they're sending these negative energies for you to not make that move for you to not start that business for, for whatever it is that you need to do but here we have readiness readiness on your mark get your set go prompt make the necessary preparations to go where you're going and don't allow the enemy to steal your joy the enemy comes to kill steal and destroy and this is what i'm saying take every thoughts captive not everything is coming from god and not every thought is worth entertaining because you may think oh it's just random no the enemy is sending that to you to steal an opportunity, to steal your peace, your joy, your contentment. The devil only steal or people will come after you to steal what they think or know is important to you. What is making you happy, that's what they want to take. Your joy, your peace, your prosperity, your abundance, that's what the devil is after. You're called to be authentic. Yeah, schedule. You know, it's like seize the moment. You see, seize the time. Time is going by. It's flying. It's like make a move. It's like now is the time to be authentic. Again, we have the vow. So we have people. You know, it's like for some of you, you need to make that wish, that hope. But then you can have people in the back. Number nine, it's people who want to end your authenticity. They don't want you to shine. They don't want you to be seen. 